Today at PTL, Bjergsen and Hooney try to out-meme Laserbeam, and uh, camera does too. What's going on? Guys, hello? What's going on? Catching a Freakachu. What the hell is a Freakachu? This, we're PTLing right now. <laughs> whoa, whoa, Freaka whoa. Freakachu! Oh, okay, so that might take priority. Primetime League starts right now! I'll be right back. <laughs> Quick decision, quick thinking, and Splice will wrap up a perfect week. Hello and welcome to Primetime League. I'm Rivington Bison III. I have successfully trained my Freakachu, and we are ready to deliver some League of Legends information. Yes, indeed. It is time to talk about the video games. I'm glad you actually have vocabulary. I trained them well. Enough with Pokemon already, though. This morning, Riot announced how you could catch them all. All the tickets to the 2016 World Championship, that is. You like that one. No, it was terrible. Ticket sales for the group stage begin uh, on July 20th for San Francisco. So Which is a sure Wednesday. That is a Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday, July 20th. Keep that in mind. So for more details on how and when to get your tickets for the World Championship, head over to lolesports.com. That's right, make it rain, get your tickets, watch yep. some league. Great. Now it's time to catch up on the plethora of roster moves and drama that took place over in Berlin this week. Get your notebooks out. First, the roster swaps. I think the most surprising is going to be second place Fnatic replacing their top laner Gamsu with former G2 First Blood King Kickus. Yeah, it's a it seems to be more of a, a mindset sort of thing. This is actually yeah. sort of what happened with with Forgiven as well, and a little bit of the case here. So Gamsu is no longer with the roster at all. Uh, as a player, he seemed fine, but this is basically them trying to make sure the mindset and the team is correct. Uh, Memento, by the way, the jungler uh, for Rocket now, replacing yeah. Airwalk, so another replacement there. Uh, also, a new AD carry for Origin. They finally found someone they like. Toaster is in. They've also got a sub top so laner many. as well. Uh, but yeah, Peke will now be a sub for two different roles. He's going to hopefully fill Gates' shoes as the ultimate sub. Uh, Forgiven also returning to H2K as a sub under Freeze. Interesting. Yeah, I would keep Freeze personally, but you yeah. never know. And hey, man, playoffs are coming up. You got to sure. have those wild cards you can throw in there and throw a team off guard. Right. So while the European LCS is chock full of changes this week, there's at least one thing that you can always count on in this topsy-turvy world of professional League of Legends. Faker's going to get his. So this legendary mid laner locked down the 1,000th LCK kill of his illustrious career as he helped SKT win their third straight match and climb back into first place. Did you ever think it wasn't possible? Yeah. And for you clue buffs out there, Faker did it with Melzahar in the river against MVP. Checkmate. Wait, wrong game. <laughs> no, it's all right. He did it. He I'll did it well. I'll give some points on that one. Now we're going to shift from the most OP mid laner in the world to the best mid laner in America. And Gate? Recently, Pro Belter <laughs> shared his disappointment in not being included in the conversation around who is the best mid laner in North America. Not only was his tweet PTL Hall of Fame worthy, but it had some legitimacy. Okay. Some. I, you, you, okay. Can, you didn't go up or down, but I, I mean. Like. Well, the notorious POB falls short of Bjergsen and KDA and GPM. He leads the King and Body by Jensen in damage per minute and damage per gold spent. Yeah, so those are interesting stats. I mean, certainly Pobolt is a very skilled player, um, but really to me, the mark of a truly excellent player is one who has a truly outstanding decision making. And you've got to put him in more situations before you can really realize what that is. Right now, I still think Bjergsen is the king, but Pobolt, maybe you're the crown prince. What are you looking at? Is that a mic in your pocket? Uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> Segways are fantastic. It's time for mic check! Dab when we win, okay? No, don't ever. Hey, Fabi, I saw your dab. It's not good. <laughs> what sound does Olivia make? I am the snow, wind, and ice. Oh! <laughs> Do Rex say. Yeah, Jay does a great Rengar. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> that? that is not Rek'Sai! The heart, the heart is, is the strong. strongest muscle. <laughs> is it actually the strongest muscle though? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah it, it is. is. Strong. Because it's, it's, what, strong. it's actually it's hella strong because it my. pumps like hella blood in your hella body. Hella body. Hella, hella body. body. Alright, come on. You guys got this. Yeah, okay? we got this. Do a good job. We always get that game to win. <laughs> Who was that man on stage telling us our pick and ban? I go, you go, I go, you go, Hey, Tish! Yeah, yeah. We win! We win! Yeah, 
Yeah. Wow. Good shit, boys! Nice! Wow, Kyrian, I love you! Nice wow. shot, Kyrian. Guys, remember, 1-3-1, one, 1-1-3, one, 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 just pay efficient. You can do both. And respect rise and split push. You don't need to win every lane, right? Okay. Two waves, and you're fine every time. Thank you. That's Alia. It's oh, insane. insane. Alia Prima Ben. Insane. Yeah. Split. We're never gonna play this champ ever again. Go on him. On my way. He died. Yeah, he's dead. That's what, Wait, one that's what I'm Ooh. talking about, Ours baby. The ladies. Oh, wow. Talia, baby. <laughs> I got it. Nice. Nice. Fast throw, fast throw. Front line, front line. Front, get front, 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 front. I need help. Focus on front. Yeah, front. Okay, they're, all okay. they're all dying, they're all dying. I don't have two sets. Nice. Go mid, go mid, go mid. Just go mid, just go mid. I, I, I can't sell, I can't sell. Panda kill. Oh, I'm base, I'm yeah, base. Yeah. I oh, you can go there. Go Nash, go Nash, go Nash, go Nash. I need it. Uh, oh my god. Nice, 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 nice. I'm base, I'm base. Go bar, I'm base. I'm base, I'm base. I'm base. I'm base. I'm base. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I have a fly on my keyboard. One for your team, man. End the game, end the game. End the game, end the game. Tower, tower, tower. Nexus, Nexus after. They're spawning soon, guys. End, end, end. Yeah, end, 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 end the game, end the game. End the game only. Only end the game. On the end, on the end. On the end, on the end. Trundle, 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 I cannot understand everything, so... <laughs> okay, well, it'll all be good. That's the spirit. Yeah. We'll get into it very shortly. But for those of you facking off with us for the first time, here's how we like to do it. I'll give Fnatic Spirited Jungler two minutes to answer as many of your Twitter questions as possible. It's that simple. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> okay, let's get to facking. So, let's start the clock. First question we have is from Sol412. On a scale of 1 to 10, how scary is Daylor? Daylor is just... I think general, yeah, no scary. Not for scary? Them, for me, for me, yeah. Wow, okay. Yeah. <laughs> we, that's. The, I mean, it's good to know. We, we've heard uh, varying stories, I can imagine. Uh, yeah, you know, it after. seems like, but no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that's good to know. Okay, so we'll move on to the second question. Um, Makadoko Artiko, that's difficult to read. What was your worst bronze moment? Ah, it's two weeks ago when we were for I zero four in HS, it was yeah. <laughs> that was your worst bronze moment. Okay, yeah. Th not in solo queue. Uh, in solo queue, I'm always being perfect, so <laughs> don't worry about it. <laughs> okay, I'm, well, I'm glad for that. Hopefully, one day I'll uh, end up on your team in about 20 years when I'm good enough <laughs> for that. Uh, okay, so at Sasuke nine one one seven zero zero asks, who is the best jungler in the meta for you? Mm, jungler, you mean is player or champion? Yeah, the champion. For mm. you. Champion is like, I think for me, Lulu is best jungler right now. Lulu is best. Okay. Yeah. I, I really want to playing it, but they love say no. Nidalee, you tweeted the other day, not so good. Uh, this champion is useless, and yeah. <laughs> so I'm not gonna play anymore. <laughs> no more. Okay, no more Nidalee. Unfortunately, maybe uh, some Spirit fans will be unhappy with that. So, what champion do you miss from the jungle? Is a question from Histy One. Mm, same as last question, like Lulu. Lulu I really hope. I, I want to play this champion in HS. <laughs> okay, hopefully we'll get to see some of that. Uh, next question, Manny Gooms asked, what is your favorite team to play against? G2. G2? Yeah, I, I just, we lose against G2 so many times, so I just want to beat them. Okay, <laughs> well, uh, hopefully we'll see you guys match up against them soon as well. Final question from at Rolster. From one to 10, how mm -hmm. handsome is Febivan? 10. Ten. So handsome guy. <laughs> Ooh, I hope he's watching this. I hope he's yeah. been watching. He'll uh, now have a big smile on his face, I'm sure, for that. Okay, well, that was the best fact off I've ever had. Uh, I'm going to be honest. Thank you very much for coming in today, Spirit. Thank you. <laughs>
You can watch Spirit and his team of fanatics try to knock the fac out of H2K and FC Schalke no fear this Thursday and Friday as the European LCS returns to its normal days and times. Always love that segment, but you know what I like more than facking off? Nothing at all. That's not true. The NALCS standings, there's a lot more, but we'll go over that later. After okay. a weekend full of games, two things changed in the standings from the week before. And I'm going to tell you, CLG moved up to fifth after going 2-0 and zero on the week. And the Phoenix rose from the ashes to move ahead of Echo Fox and into ninth place. Yep. They're soaring, baby. No longer Phoenix 1-9. and nine. They've now Still. got Phoenix 2 wins, and they can keep going up, so good for them. Yes, this is true. It's, yep. it's, it's, they're still building the bird as it's going. We'll yeah, they're that. still we'll building the, beer, the bird, yes. It does feel good, though, to get another win for them. You know what else feels good? Uh, something? Uh, winning, Freak. Oh, winning. Winning feels good. Where is your mind? Get it out of the gutter. And right now, TSM must be feeling pretty damn good about winning. Last week, Bio Daddy and crew locked in a spot in the summer playoffs by going a perfect 4-0 and zero in their games. Those four triumphs also mean the team, formerly known as Team Solomid, have now won 12 games in a row and 24 games so far this summer. That's quite a few. Yes. Just one more than 23. That's just one game win short as well of tying C9's record for longest LCS winning streak and most game wins in an LCS season. They got a lot of the most yep. this time. Most game wins is a bit cheating because they're playing best of threes now, so obviously <laughs> there's more options. But yeah, TSM can tie the game win record, uh, which is the big one, uh, in a row. Sorry, Streak. If they win game one against Echo Fox, they can, right. they can beat it if they go 2-0. The thing is, you'd think this was easy because Echo Fox are in 10th, but Echo Fox won mm -hmm. game one against TSM last time. That's the reason the Streak's at 12, because mm -hmm. of the Echo Fox win recently. So look, anything can happen. Well... Anything can happen except Echo Fox and Team Liquid beating TSM, you mean, right? I mean, a anything but? Wait a sec. What? What That'll if they up. win? Well, how did you get here? I've always been here. What? This is no different than every other week. So you're telling me these teams could win? I'm saying, what if Team Liquid beats TSM? Okay, so how? So TSM have been a driving force in the NALCS. Top of the league, By looking... Far. Unstoppable by far. Yes. They got the game win streak going on, but I think Team Liquid's going to stop that because TSM, in their losses, have shown weaknesses in the early game. Okay. Their early game tower trades, when they fall behind before 10 minutes, have not been looking as sharp as they do when they wind up winning the game. And I think that's something that Team Liquid could capitalize on. Okay. But there's, they only have three losses. There's a reason. Yeah. They only have three losses, but where those weaknesses are in the losses, Team Liquid's got some strengths of their own. You guys on the desk have called them Baby Immortals or Immortals Light or Immortals version 2.0, not necessarily not an upgrade. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Immortals I mean, if, if we're like doing sequels to movies, sure. Like they could be Immortals Episode 1 or something. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so Immortals Episode 1. But their strengths line up exactly where TSM's weaknesses in the early game line up. So I think Team Lucas got a chance in the early game to take them over. Okay, but you've got like some of the best players in the league on TSM. Yeah. Definitely top 10 players in the league on TSM, but by far, wow. to take your own thing. That's but, not even where you use by far. Yes, but two of them really stand out like a sore thumb in their losses, and that's going to be their jungler and their top laner. Sven Skarin has the most deaths per game in TSM's losses, and you said it yourself, it's only three games, and he's dying that much. Also, TSM really relies on a lot for some, from Sven Skarin in their early game map movements. Zero buffs stolen from him in that. Dardoch's gonna prey upon him, especially if he's dying that much. And when Sven Skarin dies, so does Hauntzer, and his numbers really suffer because of it. Minus 14 CSD at 10 against his opponents, and that's just more fodder for Dardoch, who's the highest kill per game jungler. Yeah, but you're looking at everything that's been central or centered around a mid-game meta, and you have Bjergsen. And that, that's, that's it right there. I've been listening, but Bjergsen. Okay, so I'm not going to go out on a limb and say that Bjergsen oh, has bad uh, numbers because by far. that's just not <laughs> true. By short, actually. But one of the things that Team Liquid has going for them is their own mid laner in Phoenix. Phoenix has been very quietly putting up some of the biggest numbers in the mid lane in the league, especially when Team Liquid wins. A lot of us have been talking about Bjergsen and Jensen and Poe Belter's clawing at his screen, wanting to be a part of those three. Phoenix has been quietly just dominating them in the statistical categories. So Team Liquid has their own kind of threat in the mid lane. So if you're worried about playing around mid lane and TSM taking advantages there, I think Phoenix can go toe to toe with Bjergsen. So would you say Team Liquid wins? Are you signing? Are you signing off on this? Right I now? am. Team Liquid wins. This is me, Optimus Mom. 
optimist mom. Well, I don't know. That's that's my mother. But oh, oh right. Okay. If you guys find yourselves watching the game today or later on this week, and Team Liquid grabs first blood, and Dardock is standing over the corpse of the blue buff from Sven Skaren's very own jungle, don't be afraid to ask yourselves, what if Team Liquid wins? Huh. Huh. Yeah. Well, whatever. Wonder if they would win. I, I mean, wonder how he got here too. Yeah, that was weird. He kept saying he he's been here the whole time. Never seen him in my life. No, nope. Optimus Dad. He said uh, no, him? it's it's um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, op, op, Operation Ron, something like that. There it is. Yeah, I got another what if for you while we're yeah, going back and up? forth. Actually, what if the NALCS started at 3 p.m. this Friday? By far. What would you do? Uh, oh, I would I would show up on time and watch the games. You're right. Yeah, we gotta go to the next. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It is. It's going to start on Friday. This bat this Friday, the battle between Immortals and Counterlogic Gaming will start at a new, more East Coast Europe European friendly time of 3 p.m. Pacific. A lot of P's in there. Alliteration. Yes, got but me. Riv, you've got to say it like Beetlejuice. You say it three times, everyone remembers. That's true. North American LCS starts at 3 p.m. Pacific on Friday. 3, 3 p.m. Pacific, Pacific on Friday. Friday. 3, 3 p.m. Pacific, Pacific on Friday. Friday. Go ahead. Nothing happened. The LCS appears. Now it's going to happen. <laughs> you know what else as well? I am thankful for you, the players. And to show you just how thankful I am to say we have another skin code to give away. But first, I'll give you 10 seconds to open up your client. Ooh, I can fill 10 seconds of time. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you a joke. Uh, why do chefs always love cooking for Echo? Because Echo always comes back for seconds. And time's up. What was the joke? Echo always goes back four seconds. Oh, I wasn't listening. Uh -oh. If you want to get your hands on Arcade Ribbon, just fill in the missing letters in this code and be first to submit. Here's a hint. The guy's E scales off of it. That guy. His E scales off of it. Uh, tears? Is it Tears, Riv? Yes. No, it's not. There's, there's not four blank characters. Exactly. That's or why five. I would get it and you would have a false answer. You're lying to me. And I would That's win. messed up. But speaking of tears, Tears of joy from laughing too much, that <laughs> is. There it is, that wasn't fake. It's time to dive deep into the eSports meme phenomenon. I didn't say Phenomenon. That. Phenomenon, with a little help from laser beams. What's usually black, white, offensive, and spreads like herpes? Memes. They are taking the world by storm, and eSports is no exception with 38,383 new eSports memes created every single second. However, what makes an eSports meme popular? What makes it so great? I sat down with some pros to get to the bottom of it. Ah, f Welcome to Three Minutes. No problem. Thanks for being here. Memes are dreams. I just need to hear memes. Like, I'm listening to memes. People are speaking to me in memes. What is your favorite esports meme and why? I like the little Metagross wiping the sweat off his forehead. My favorite esports meme. Well, I gotta say that Body by Jensen because it's it's kind of related to me in a way. What makes a meme great? What elements? <clears throat> it has to be dick. How stupid it sounds, but how funny it is at the same time. Let's play meme inspiration. I'm gonna hold up some photos, and you caption them for me. Sound good? Sounds great. Uh, I'm nervous. Me too. Yeah. Oh god. Holy shit, it comes with avocado? <laughs> That's my boss, dude. I know. I can't meet my boss. Actually, I meet my boss all the time. He's definitely having a good time, but an erection? Body? Body by, by Saint. Saint. Yeah, yeah, you're right. When you're f***ing ripped. When you're thinking about all the good times. When you're thinking about your bae. The, the girl you used to love and then it's all over. And all you've got left is that... Is that pickle? <laughs> <laughs> What's he holding? He's holding a bean. Is it like some sort of banana? What is that? Tentacles? Testicles? No, no, no. Tentacles. Very specifically tentacles. Tentacles, okay. That was fun. Do you think you can create a better meme than me? Is that, is that even a question, Laser Beams? Yes, do you it is. you know who I am? Yes, I do. Good. Well then, let's get it on.
The successful meme is an elusive and fickle creature. Their popularity is unpredictable. Their virality is never guaranteed. However, in that montage you just watched, magic was created. But we'll let you be the judges. The choice is up to you, the community. Just make sure to make the right choice. I would hate to have to make a meme out of you. This is Laser Beams for three minutes. Hey, I've got a meme for you. Why are you so bad at PTO's Twitter question? Look, last week we asked you just to predict which LCS bot lane do would have the highest KDA? There's only 20 options. For Chance Hall of Fame, you just tell us what the KDA would be. That's not hard, it's a two digit number. Congratulations. Well, believe it or not, the correct answer was Splice Deadly Duo of Kabi and Mickey X with a KDA 13.6. <sighs> okay, look, okay. I have to apologize to the four of you who actually guessed those players. So, whew. here comes a heartfelt apology. Why are you so far so bad at PTO's Twitter question? You didn't get the Hall of Fame question right. Ah, <sighs> apologies always make me feel so much better. You know what else does? Giving away a skin code to at SoarLol because you correctly guessed Kabi and Mickey X and well, the RNG chose you. So now you're the lucky owner of an arcade ribbon skin code. Congratulations. Ah, now you know the only thing that feels even better than winning an arcade ribbon skin code? But winning a game with a 45 health nexus, that's what. Over the last couple of weeks, you've seen several Nexi hang on with a dollop of health, and it happened again last week in the EULCS and the LMS. Can they turn it around? They're so they low. They have the CC. Can they turn it's it back? Triple kill. Yes, it's alive. Oh, yes. oh, oh my oh, God. It's up for the Another down. one. Quadra kill. And EU just keeps delivering. Wow, now the LMS is using the Pugong. One and one, very carefully, they're hitting the Fanita. Rays is on the other side, but they're not going to get it. But this Pugong is going to get it. 哇，没爆了！啊，这个 SKU 的猪爆炸一下。Now all those godlike nexuses got us thinking about this week's Twitter question. We want you to tell us which winning LCS team's nexus will survive with the lowest amount of health this weekend. For chance the Hall of Fame, tell us how much health that nexus was at at its lowest point before they eventually won the game. Anyway, it's not an easy one. But you know what? Make sure you tweet us at Lily Sports and hashtag PTL. That part's easy to remember. But now I've got another meme for you. You can't be the best without beating the best. Speaking of the best, here I am. To give you the best picks in fantasy this week at PTL's Fantasy Minute. So let's kick it off right away with the guys that you are going to want to start on your lineup, the studs. Proxen and Hakuo, a pair of guys from Envy, are going to have a pretty good fantasy week this week. They're going up against Energy and Apex, so expect big things from them. Now, Sonstar over here, while he may look a little camera shy, has quietly transformed into a top eight fantasy point AD carry, and he still has a rather low ownership percentage. So pick that guy up. He's really good. But now that we talked about the good guys, let's talk about the duds, because for every stud, there is an equal and opposite dud. It's Optom's Laws of Fantasy Points. Darshan and Stixay had a really good week six, but going up against TSM and Immortals this week, they're not gonna have a really good week seven, so you may wanna put them on the bench. Also, from H2K, we have Freeze. He hasn't looked the most in form. For Gibbons added to the roster as a sub two, maybe give him a little bit of a push, but he's the 12th fantasy point 80 carry on in the league, so that's actually the lowest on H2K in general, so you may wanna avoid starting him this week. He's got a couple of tough matchups. But now, it's time for a little. Risky business. I'm never gonna do that again. Kikis is back in the lineup, and when he was on Gamers 2, he looked really good. So now that he's in the top lane for Fnatic, who are also really good, you may wanna try picking him up before everybody else gobbles him up towards the end of the season. But we also have a pair of energy players that are a little bit of a risk. Going up against Phoenix 1 and Envy, they could potentially pull out not only some big fantasy points, but some victories, especially against Envy. You may not think they're gonna put up points in that game. These are the two of the longest game time teams in the North American LCS. So of course, if we learned previously, 
Long games, lots of fantasy points. So you can take a risk on those guys. But that's gonna be it for the formal portion of PTL's Fantasy Minute. If you want a little PTL Fantasy After Dark style, head on over to the LOL Esports YouTube channel where I'm gonna be answering questions for the Fantasy LCS form. What's harder to take out than an EU LCS Nexus? The EU LCS rundown, but I'm about to do that quicker than Perks. Perks used to grab himself first blood. Speaking of G2, after week six of the LCS, the league's best bad guys are still undefeated and still in first place, while Yellow Star stopped face checking bushes for no reason long enough to allow Fnatic to snap their losing streak and hold on to that second place. Meanwhile, Yamato Cannon has Splice slithering all the way up the standings, all the way to third place after a two and zero week. And as a fun fact, this spring, they never got higher than seventh place on the table. Now, while I could probably talk about H2K's recent struggles, I prefer to keep things positive and spin a yarn about the giant's climb up the proverbial beanstalk. And by that, I mean the LCS standings, of course. After splitting games with G2, Silent Knight, Deadly Knight, and Sun Star Killer Base beat down H2K for their third win of the week. Again, another fun fact, the Giants only won three games the entire spring split, but now they're in fifth place and in control of their own playoff destiny. Who knew having two Korean carries would make such a big difference? Let's be honest with ourselves, though. When the summer split started, did any of us actually believe the Giants and Splice would be contending for the playoffs or that their game this week would be one of the most anticipated showdowns of week seven? One of the reasons why is that Yamato Cannon has his team firing on all cylinders heading into what could be one of the most difficult weeks for his team so far. Not only are they facing the fairy tale that is the Giants' summer split, they take on the team that everybody loves to hate as well. Splice's Rise has been a team effort as everybody on the roster has really stepped up. Wonder leads the top laners in kills and CS per minute. Trashy is tied for the most assists coming out of the jungle. Senkux is tied for mid lane KDA and cobby has got 100 kills, only one behind Reckless for the league lead so far. If Yamato Cannon can get the best out of his team this week and pull off the 2-0 week, not only would Splice prove that they're for real, but I'll probably be wearing that tactical turtleneck from now on a little bit more often. So EU LCS is back to our regular times on our regular days. So Thursday and Friday, make sure you're tuning in as we get closer and closer to the playoffs. But that's all from Europe for now. Now it's time for Who's That Pro? I mean, Know the Pro. On Tuesday, we tweeted out a close-up featuring a pair of lips that belong to a face that is attached to a body that controls a set of arms that earned the right to lift the Summoner's Cup back in season two. If you guessed this baby was none other than T Team J's 80 carry BB, you're an amazing human being. While the team name on the front of his jersey might have changed with the purchase of the Taipei Assassins, Bebe's game stayed the same. That's on point. This former world champion is crushing the competition and has led his J team to an impressive record of four wins and one tie so far this summer. And while it is a team game, BB's individual stats are stupendous. This J team carry leads all LMS AD carries in KDA, KPG, and DPM. That's kills per game and damage per minute. And initialisms in general. He also provides the perfect segue into a PTL segment we like to call the Regional Rundown. And we start off the regional rundown in two ways. First, by welcoming a freak back. Welcome back, freak! Thanks, Trev! Freak's back. Secondly, by highlighting our BF Match of the Week. BF Match of the Week is here. Hi, BF Match of the Week, featuring Hello. Baby's J Team taking on NL and the Flash Wolves. The Wolves take to the rift with a perfect 5 0 record and a perfect 10 0 game record. While J Team has dropped one game and tied one series. Not too shabby and meaning this is gonna be an awesome matchup. So in a league where the Flash Wolves and AHQ have dominated the last several splits, J-Team has a chance to not only hand the Wolves their first loss of the summer, but sweep the perennial powerhouses and make a long awaited return to the top of the table in LMS. Yeah, absolutely agree. It's gonna be a wonderful match here. Two ex excellent, excellent teams right now. Talk about Flash Wolves though. Karsa and Maple, the jungler and mid laner, have been practically unkillable this summer. They each do average that. less than one death per game. I mean, this is how much Flash Wolves are crushing their region right now. But they finally get a real test here. J Team, honestly, very good in the mid and jungle themselves. Fofo and Refrain are very good players. And this actually should be a, a good match. Best of two. 
Should be great. The heavyweight bout, and you can yeah. catch this one. It will be the title card of an extended LMS week that features 10 matches due to the league rescheduling several several series in the wake of a super typhoon. So yeah. I hope everybody is okay mm -hmm. and they can get everything back into order. Now let's shift our focus over to China's LPL, where Edward Gaming beats everyone. We're done. Just kidding. And Royal Never Give Up beats everyone but EDG. Other than that, the only changes in the standing since last week are that the second and third place teams swap places in both groups. Saint Gaming won their first series and OMG lost two more matches. Oh my God, dude, they're still getting wrecked. Yeah, it's it's been pretty rough to see. Yeah, uh, hope they don't lose their cool. No, nah, oh, <laughs> you, you would, you would. I would. But I gotta give that to you, good job. Thanks. All right, that's nice. Moving on. You know who else played well? Invictus Gaming's former mid laner turned 80 carry rookie. Why are all these mid laners going 80 carry? Uh, because roll stopping <laughs> is fun. It's counter logic. Why wouldn't you do it? So IG made Ooh. several roster changes heading into their series against Aimee. Rookie and new returning mid laner Zatai, actually, he used to be one. He was a top laner. They came back to mid lane. They did well in game one, but rookie looked like his namesake at times. Well, I mean, he's not really an ADC, so surprise there. Positioning wasn't too great, got caught out, and actually IMA took the final two games of the series. So, yep. yeah, that's a loss for you right there. The roll shift from AD carry didn't work out uh, as badly for X Peke. I mean, he, he was okay at AD carry, uh, but you know, rest in Pepe Nero. We'll see if this rookie can be the exception and, and you know find some more good things to happen for him. The new trend at Worlds isn't going to be like a single champion that people play. It's swapping roles, freak. Yep. If only we could have five gates, you'd be the best team in the world. You actually would. It's been spectacular to watch yeah. that happen. Mid laners swapping to AD carry wasn't the only resemblance China's LPL bore to the European League Championship Series. Last week's game between OMG and Newbie lasted 67 minutes and 29 seconds, the longest in LPL history. Congrats. And that's LPL crazy region. because they're like significantly, still significantly faster than every other region's slowest game, and so they just they just end games faster, man. <laughs> they just got the thing going on. So you know, eventually maybe hit the 80 minute mark and you can join the big boys club. But for now, you know, just nothing to press with you, China. Yeah. Pick not it so up. Much. Not yeah. so much. We'll have to see if they can do Noobs. better and get longer games. Absolutely the case. Like 90 said, minutes every game. They need to watch more throw tips. Yes, that would be helpful. That'll help. Now let's portal over to our final region in this premier party. Where is Korea's LCK? Early Wednesday morning, Pacific time, Rocks Tigers took out KT Rolster to join Samsung and SKT in pole position. Yeah, wonderful stuff. So even though all three teams are tied in match records, SKT's in first place because of game differential, which is the primary tiebreaker here in Korea. Plus 13 for them, Rocks are plus 10. Uh, sorry, Samsung's plus 10 and Rocks is at plus 8. Yeah. And correction. Yes. It's hard to believe that just two weeks ago we were talking about the demise of SKT. Like I said, we were going to watch them come back up yeah. anyways. They lost to sixth place of Freak of Freaks and eighth place ever. But now they're back in first place after taming the Tigers and riding out the roller coasters in last week's BF Game of the Week double header. Yeah, it was beautiful to watch. SKT honestly have had tons of ups and downs the whole split. I've, yep. I've made ups and downs puns before, so. Uh, you can just go back and watch those as YouTube videos already. But Faker, you know, had something to say about their tumultuous split in an interview with Cloud Templar. Uh, and he said, you know, not only did he say that uh, he tends to get nervous when he shouldn't and then doesn't yeah, get nervous he, when he should. Yeah, I should be nervous, but now I'm not. And so, then yeah. I was nervous earlier. And Yeah. You know, he also said that the, that the good teams get nervous against them while the bad teams just go <laughs> ham when they play as good. He's like, well, we're just going to, you know, throw it all against the wall anyway, which, which makes a lot of sense, honestly. And, you know, when you go ham and you go really hard against the champions, it tends to work well. Uh, and, and the thing is, talking about nerves, no matter how practiced you are, you will always get nervous as a professional if it matters to you. That is just the case. Yes. And it's actually up to you to manage that energy and push it somewhere forward. So, Faker, you will always be nervous when you go to things like MSI. It's about how you harness that. Yep. That's the word I was going to use. Get out of my brain. Sorry. So imagine how good that Faker guy could be if he could just get over his nerves. So yeah. All of us could. We'd all be... In Challenger. We'll I don't, I don't that think that stage. actually happened. It's only 20, 200 spots. I'll fair enough. Uh, one thing you don't have to imagine is how good the top five plays from last weekend were. Or as X Gamers, Suwako and Newbies V can call it the Penta. Coming in at number five, Newbies V picked up five kills.
Newbie's still gonna Bees try and for the fight. Bees in the back lines, SMLs, he has to be really careful. Happy, he thinks he's an assassin, he's definitely playing like one. He's going toe to toe, takes down SMLC, going for five, but that's a double kill coming happy. up for V. They're looking for the rest of the team. It's gonna be happy, he's trying to demolish them in the back lines. Memory's the only damage he'll learn. A triple kill comes out for V. Five's the next to the quadra. He's going for the pentakills. Memory's gonna get taken down, and it's gonna be the pentakill coming out for V. Eventually, there's a Guardian Angel first fish. We'll see how we go. <laughs> <laughs> Memory's finally going to take it down. And this should be game coming out for Newbie. TSM's Biofrost saved Double If's life in our number four play. Double If now in a bit of trouble. Hype is going to proc Impact. We'll keep chasing in. Bounces on his head. Double If falls oh! to five. Misses the net. And Impact going to chase him down. One more. Oh! Oh! Gets the door. Now they're going to stun him up. They get it under the turret. And Impact, he oh, transforms to watch him. The Bio God is in the house! Double it was praying to his Lord! And he came to save him! Holy moly! What a play right there! At number three from the LMS, X Gamer Suwako made quick work of Team Mist with his pentakill. At number two, H2K's Nexus was hard to kill as Yankos defended it with his quadra kill. Can they buy the time? Can they turn this around? Two members hitting the base. Rawis hitting the base. Oh, Rawis Will he die. drop? He's going to drop. Can they turn it around? They're so it low. They have the CC. Can they turn it's it back? Gone. Triple it's kill. Gone. Yes, it's going. Yes. It's happening oh, again. God. It's happening Another again. Another one. Quadra kill. And EU just keeps delivering. And at number one, watch closely as SKT's faker didn't need smoke and mirrors to make himself disappear. Baker, gonna get interrupted by the Glacial Fisher, has to dash away with the distortion, snaps back. None of these bullets gonna hit except for the last one, and it might be the only one that matters. He's got no HP. Here comes Cry, can he close the distance? The Flash is not available, throws out the Sand Soldiers, but it doesn't matter. TP coming through, Gorilla shows up, turns the corner, finds Faker. Then the immediately, look at that communication, curtain call starts, and it's just about dodging bullets for Faker. <laughs> gonna bite one, but he'll get out. The help of his distortion and the flash, which was still available. Notice how long he held that flash, too. He was very sure he wasn't going to die to that fourth shot. Good old Faker Playmaker. Yep. There are plenty of big plays out there, so if you see one, make sure you are ready to catch it by tweeting at LOL Esports with the hashtag the Penta. And if it makes the cut, we'll put it in next week's episode. Wonderful. So keep on that. Do your duty. Now, if you've taken some time off from League lately to try and catch them all or something, your rift skills may be feeling a little rusty, don't worry. We've got all the tips you need to evolve your game in this week's last hit. Welcome now to Throw Tips, where we give you the tips that will help you give your team the shaft. All right, first up, remember that even if the other team doesn't want to kill you for first blood and runs away, be sure to follow them and let the tower do the dirty work. They'll appreciate it. He's still on one CS and he only poked him down, so he's only limiting Rocket's ability to tank creeps here. And I oh, really race. Oh, what? race! What? That's not what I was expecting! Striving for excellence. And trust me, this is a great way to lull the opposing team into a false sense of confidence. You get them right where you want them. Up next, if you're gonna try and pull off a tier one tower trade, make sure you execute yourself without last hitting the tower, and you'll deny more CS that way. Uh, even though Dardock has a couple wow. extra camps to take, I don't think Bullish should have flash. Ah! I think he's better off getting executed. Ah! Oh my gosh. Pinnacle of expertise. That is the tower of the game. Finally, if you're going to get hit by an ash arrow, try and make it a flashy play. Oh, Brown going for Trace. They have the Ash Arrow coming through. Is it going to be enough? Oh, he flashes, flashes into it. it! Oh my god, Trace, no! As you can see, flashing so it hits you directly in the Ash is the utmost disrespect. And even the LCK can teach us something. That's it for this week's throw tips. And remember, if you aren't throwing, you aren't trying.
Now it's time to catch up on the plethora of <coughs> moves and drama that took place over in Berlin this week. Bless you, sir. And then something fell. Ah, one of the headsets fell off the desk. We'll do that again. We should try again.